Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage. And today I've got a bit of a special video for you because, well, you might have seen a couple of weeks ago, I had a Golf R in to test, really enjoyed it. But in the summary, I said, I wonder what the Golf GTI is like. It's a bit lighter, quite a lot of horsepower, 245 horsepower now. So I've booked one in and there it is, shiny uh, tornado red. But to make life a little bit more interesting, I've got my son that's going to help me out on this video because you've been rocking around in this Alfa Giulietta Veloce. I have for about five months now. I yeah. uh, have it at university. My mates love it. They call it the spaceship. Yeah. And I have a lot of fun driving around the countryside in yeah. my Alfa. Yeah, it's a bit of a riot that one. It's 240 horsepower, very similar to the Golf. The Golf's 245 horsepower almost the same price point. Golf is more expensive as you'd imagine. Um, I think it's 29,950 the list price on the Alpha uh, and the Golf is 31,600 before you add a few extras on it. The car you see here is 35,000 or thereabouts this um, Golf but actually it's got the six speed manual rather than the dual clutch transmission like the Alpha. So quite different. We're going to price in a bit more detail because basically no one actually pays list price for any car uh, these days so I'll go into that when we get um, um, further into the video but for now let's go and have a look around these cars okay quick look at the Golf GTI um, very similar obviously to the Golf R but I actually think the Golf GTI with its flash of red looks better um, than the R which just have a silver line it's a bit too conservative for my like in the Golf R but this one as you can see the flash of red through the um, headlights and then the uh, brake calipers I'm not sure about the wheels with their pinstripe on it this car is the three door. I would have liked the five door um, just so it was direct comparison to the, the Alpha. And at the back, all very similar. Rather than the quad pipes, you get these twin oversized pipes, as they call it. Um, but a really sharp looking car. Um, great lights, LED lights on it as well. Um, but if you really want flair and, and interest in the design, have a look at this Alpha. Um, we were seduced, Charlie and I, when we were sort of choosing which car to go for. And it has this availability of this uh, matte grey, magnesia grey, as they call it. And I think it sets it off. It's only a thousand pound option. Sometimes you pay tens of thousands for matte paint, but Alpha somehow get away with charging just a thousand pounds. And then with that flash of red um, around the grill and the badge, just is a good looking car. Extras on this car, just the uh, five um, whole wheels, are very distinctive Alpha wheels. Red calipers, the big brakes, Brembo brakes, that's all standard on this car. Great seats inside as well with a sort of harness look. And then round the rear, again, a very neat design. It's, this car is coming up for its seventh birthday. It might even have had a seventh birthday, but it still looks pretty sharp as you sort of expect from an Alpha. And again, there's some great lights as well with the LED lights around. We always had distinctive um, light design and this one is no different, this Giulietta. Actually, we ought to, um, if I could just have a look at the engine. There we go. Just love the look of that. 1750cc on this car, um, the Alpha, rather than two litres on the Golf. But Benzina, turbo Benzina. Um, a typical style of Alpha. Also like the headlights as well, the lovely carbon finish with the Alfa Romeo script on it. It's like, it's like the Italians, you just, they care about these sort of details and it shines all the way through the design of this car. Anyway, I'm going to get Charlie back. I'm going to take both cars outside. The weather gods aren't with us today. It's pouring in the rain, but we'll go out on some of our favourite roads and just see how these two cars compare. Yeah, just, just before I close the door, I don't know if you can see, there's a lovely sort of red LED stripe on there. And as you get in the doors, another stripe of red to remind you you're in the GTI. Red, uh, red on the dash, red stitching. It's yes, yeah, a bit overboard on the on the red really. Um, but it's sort of what the, that R was missing. It didn't have that signature. But I know I'm in a Golf GTI. Beautifully laid out. I'm doing it inside the store because it is so wet outside rather than outside. Charlie's in the Alpha. We're heading out. Best bits of road I know around here, and just see how these cars actually perform. Is it out there? Four degrees. Feels colder than that though. Fortunately, the standard heated seats on a Golf GTI, so I've got it on three bars. Highly efficient actually. You can't do three bars for very long. This one has the Golf, um, has the panoramic roof as well, which is a nice extra, but pricey. A thousand pounds or so. Anyway, off to our favourite bits of road. 
I'm going to do this. I'm in the Golf first. Charlie's following the Alpha. Then we'll swap over. Uh, Charlie can have a go in this. Uh, I'll be in the Alpha. Uh, then we'll join together and, and just sort of work out which car is best uh, between us, which one we prefer. So anyway, favourite bit of road in the Golf GTI. Now I, I went down the same bit of road with the R and uh, it's really interesting to see how this GTI, it is a different sort of car. You do immediately feel a, um, slightly less weight. It must be, I think it was 1520 was it or something, 1386 for this. So over 130 kilos difference between a, a GTI and an R. And you feel it on the road. You know, it, it, it just it doesn't actually, what you notice with the R, it actually has a better ride because of that weight. It, it's sort of moving its mass around. This feels more nimble immediately um, to the R. And then there's the lack of mass when you're through the corners. Um, hard to explain when you're following a discovery and you're on a straight bit of road. But there is a difference to the dynamics between the two. Very, very distinct. More so than I expected. The thing you notice with the GTI, the torque is still there. Seven, uh, sorry, 370 newton meters for this, 380 newton meters for the R. It's very close in it. Uh, but yeah, that lack of mass again. When you're just going through a series of bends like now, this does feel more nimble than the R. What I can't do is actually plant the power on the way out. But it is a very inattrusive uh, traction control. Really good. So it does power through much better than I expected and it's got this trick mechanical diff in here and that just pulls you through so you can use more of the horsepower more of the time than you can on other two-wheel drive cars as we'll find out with the Alpha. I have to say I've got the Alpha right up and chuff at the moment with Charlie. It does look good in the mirror the Alpha. It has the looks. Alpha is so good that distinctive grille at the front. It does look very good in the mirror. Where you, lack, where you notice the lack of horsepower is when you actually feed it through the rev range because there's a fair bit more horsepower to be had in the R and it's actually more vocal as well. Again, I've got the DCC on this uh, car. I've put that in onto individual. It's a, a, say, a must have a, um, option, but it's 830 pounds or something. But it does make a difference and it's well worth having. Good. When we get in the Alpha, the one real difference is the steering. We find this uh, with the v, with the Golf, it's just a bit slow, which it doesn't turn in quite as well, not nearly as sharp as the Alpha, and not as sharp as you expect. And the other thing I've noticed, you can you can set a, an angle on it, and there's sort of stiction in it, and it will it won't actually go back to centre. So it's a little bit vague on the steering, more so than I would hope really for a, a car like this. But the, the chassis and the dynamics, it, it does handle the horseback really well. Here we go. So yes, that diff, I can feel it fighting. Um, it's what I want from the Golf uh, GTI as well. But uh, yeah, it's up, it's up for the fight in this Golf. I can't wait actually, I'm going to swap over just up here. And then we'll, we'll have to see what the Alpha can do down the same bit of road. Just see how different that car is to this very dynamic Golf GTI. Got cool, very different in here. Um, first thing you notice is, whoa, you sit really low. You're like in a a touring car position. You notice the glass is up here. Um, the view out is different. The seats, they're taller. Um, the, the others have stronger bolsters actually on the um, GTI, but yeah, you are low. And then there's no manual gearbox option on this car. Um, if you want the uh, Veloce version of your Giulietta, it's um, DCT only, dual clutch transmission only. And it's a strange gearbox. It isn't a real feisty, um, fast changing um, dual clutch transmission. <sighs> yeah, nice little alpha noise coming through already. So much sharper on the steering. I mean, 
we got sort of know it from Ferrari so that the Fiat Group do like these quick steering racks and that's exactly what I've got in here super quick rack right we're straight into the action around these two bends this bend what have I got here yeah, it's, uh, it grips oh it's yeah, struggling to get the power down though whoa chalk and cheese to the uh, the Golf. Now I've got this quick steering, I've got a, a front end that can't quite handle the 240 horsepower so I've got a little bit of torque steer but I'm going pretty chuffy quick. I was looking at, if you look at the stats, the boat would say 240 horsepower for this but it's 1750cc engine so it's having to work hard though and it's boosts higher. But the chassis one surprise, when we first got this car, it has quite a grown up chassis, it doesn't... Alpha a few years ago were all at sea at how they set up um, their chassis, they just... You had a rough ride, but you didn't have the benefit dynamically. Now, it's softened off, it's rounded off, it actually is a pretty decent ride now. But uh, it, it has the dynamic edge that it lacked before. This is quite fun actually. It sort of feels alpha, as you imagine, slightly flakier at the outer edges, but good fun and quick. So this is six seconds to 60 versus um, 6.2 for the uh, Golf GTI. It's even got launch control in it as well. I'm, really, I'm quite impressed with this. I can't tell you the difference in the steering mode. It reminds you what you know quick good steering is. I think the Golf is a little bit over electric assisted and they've sort of worked on some other things with it. There's some great you know, bits of extra kit on the Golf. I've got wonderful LCD screens. I haven't got here, I've got conventional dials, but they're good clear dials. It's good round there. It's really good. That's one of my favourite bends and this car. It's quite pointy, quite aggressive setup. I can see why Charlie likes this. Right, really short gearing on this car, and off we go. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a car that you wouldn't, yeah, you want to drive with two hands on the steering wheel. The torque steer is, um, yeah, it's certainly there, unlike the Golf. It's much more polished. It's a horse, I'm just slowing down for this so don't freak the horse there we are yeah and there isn't quite that torque at the bottom end uh, that the golf got but then again it's got the two litre engine so i'm not surprised it's also got this extra gauges like the golf i've got horsepower at the moment i can have torque um, and i can have i think uh, boost i'll get charlie to do that when he's in the car it hasn't quite got the polish of the golf i think that's that's the feeling with this car Amazing to think that both of these, um, 30,000 pound car, this is 152 mile an hour top speed and the um, Golf 155. Quite a remarkable sort of speed. We used to, you had to, only used to get that sort of speed from the cars like the Focus RS and things like that, but now they come with this sort of livability. Performance uplift is quite amazing in the last few years. And I'm going here through, well, yeah, again, lovely set of bends here feel that lightness. I think it's 320 kilos this car so I say with DSG gearbox, oh god that's sharp, that steering is so sharp. Oh it just pulls. Uh, it says it has electronic locking diff but um, yeah it's, it's, it's struggling with these damp conditions but uh, I don't know it's just that fight it adds to the fun of driving this car. It feels as though it hasn't quite got as much suspension travel as the Golf on these sort of undulations here. It just feels more tightly controlled. You know, I think it doesn't have the quality on the switch gear. I can, it sort of feels sharp on the um, indicator stalks and the headlights. And uh, it's not quite right that the graphics aren't quite as big on the screen, but then it comes back as I with the way it's trimmed. I think this is a really nice this sort of carbon look wheel feels really good, it's more shapely, it's, um, it's a good size and you want it shapely because you, you hang on to it <laughs> for a road like this. 
seats grip you perhaps not quite as well as the ones in the Golf. The side bolsters aren't quite as grippy here, but then they've got Alcantara, and you forgive them everything for the way they look and the you know the four point harness look in a car like this. They're quite distinctive seats. Around we go. Yeah, it hangs on there actually. If you're not actually feeling the power, it's got not it's got good bite at the front, but then I put the power down. I wriggle. You can't actually switch um, any traction control off on this. It's what you just put it in dynamic, and that's all you've got. But yeah, overall, really good fun. Right, it's time to get Charlie in here and see what he thinks of the Golf. How do you get on then? <sighs> it's cold. It is, isn't it? Um, how do I get on? Golf's a nice car. Yeah. It sort of feels quite grown up, doesn't it? It's sort of bigger. Yeah. Than what you thought. It, it feels quite powerful down low end. Yes, I think that's the um, two litre engine versus the 1750 in here. No, I've got to agree. Um, this one does feel planted though. I think there is something about it being the five door. It does feel a little bit bigger. I'm not sure what the weights Funny. are, but... If this one's actually lighter. Is it? Yeah, and it's the first time I've chucked it down here. And the, as I was saying on, uh, before, is the, is the steering is completely different. Oh, to the big golf. time, yeah. No, it's, this one feels very alive. Yes. Like, like Whoa, it's, we're off. it might be quite fun, and it yeah. might, but it then doesn't score very highly on reviews, but I yeah. way prefer this because it makes, it feels like you're actually driving it or just harnessing some sort of Italian thing. Yes. Well, I, they're so stereotypical of their countries, aren't they? The, the Gulf. Yeah, oh, big Germanic, time. Yeah. Sensible very good tech on it. Um, this is the way to do it. Polish this one, a bit of a, a bit of a madman, you can feel oh, lots of espresso yeah, sort no, no, of no. enjoy the development. You know, how can we make it madder? Crazy. Oh, the, the, it uh, does feel very industrious that the golf. Yeah. It's the, the, the what you're touching on is actually when you do it road testing and you um, delivering a verdict on cars, you have this moral dilemma because you sometimes you just want to put the fun one at the top of the list, but actually the German car, in this instance the Golf, is the better car. But is it actually the one you want to take the ta uh, keys off the table? And you think, well, I don't know, actually. I think I'd rather have the madness of the Alpha and the looks. Yeah, and that is, I have to agree. I, yeah. I sort of sit and like, I, would I rather be in this? And I'm, I think I'm at an age where it doesn't really matter. I don't really care no. about the refined or the beauty and no. like the driving experience. I want one that really will put a smile on my face yeah. and I will pick this over the golf every single day of the week doing yeah. that. I think if you're age 52, you are in towards the golf because there's a nice extra panoramic roof. It's got the cruise control um, with the radars and it's, it's got extra safety because you're doing emergency braking for yeah. it. But if I was age 22, well, I'm having an alpha. I'm having an alpha. <laughs> yeah, with no, no questions. Not even going to go into the VW showroom. No. Well, the other thing I just touched on at the beginning was the, the money. The, they're close on money on this price, but no one actually pays this price for cars today. And uh, I know when we were looking at research, um, the, the Golf, if you look at a sort of pre registered one, they're about 30,000. And then the the Alpha, you can find them about 22,000, so there's an 8,000 pound difference in the actual price you'll pay if you go into the showroom. And that, that persuades me to buy the Alpha as well. Yeah, and I, uh, I don't like the Golf Keys. No. Um, I've I think Alpha, uh, Keys are something that I kind of feel quite funny about. I think yeah. Keys are actually really important because it's the sort of bit of car that you take into the house and you see it when you're not in it. And yeah. I just, I way prefer the Alpha Key. I think it's just a lot more styled and people had actually thought about making yeah. the key look good compared to the Golf one where I think they, it was something that they do last, it's last on their list. Yeah. But I think it's something Alpha do really well. I think what it actually happens, that's why he says you should always own an Alpha at home. It sort of turns you into a car enthusiast because you suddenly yeah. notice all these little bits that yeah. you suddenly enjoy about the car that people, you know, your mum says, what are you on about the key? What's that matter? But yeah. it suddenly does when you own an Alpha and it's got a really sexy key. It just sort of makes you smile. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, it's been great fun having the two cars together. I um, hope you've enjoyed it as well. If I had to put a winner, it's sort of the Golf, because if you look at the price point and what it can do and the extra equipment, but it's a, a no, I, and keys. Obviously, I disagree, yeah. because I think the Alpha is much better because exactly. it's more suited to me. Well, that's what I'd say. If there's a, a key uh, grabbing uh, competition on the table, the Alpha gets it. So there you go. That's the verdict. Hope you enjoyed the video. We have. Keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon. And thank you, Charlie. That's all right, guys. <laughs> Effort on brake. Yeah. Hold down the downshift for two seconds. And then foot all the way down on the accelerator. All the way, all the way down. Oh, it I should rev up to three and a bit. Yeah. And then let go of the brake. <laughs> no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't like that. Can't help with the slip. Yeah.